detailed interpretive tool, so that would be worth it. Taping? Taping. Yeah. I wore a proper shirt <laughs> so that you can I'll make you look like a pro. Like a pro. Yeah, yeah I want to be like a pro. <laughs> 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 make up, make up, go on. Gosh, where are you? <laughs> Hairdresser. So I this is on now. Okay. <laughs> Action. Okay, uh, August eighth, is it? Two thousand, Chatal Huyuk. Uh, we are in oh, August ninth. <laughs> Cut that out. August 9, uh, 2000, Chattel We are in, the, in building 3 in space 158. And it's central and northern side of uh, 158. And here we have a nice example of how our west wall was rebuilt three times, basically. And we are looking at a late west wall. The original west wall uh, of the house was deeper down, somewhere here, where my left foot is. And later on it was rebuilt, and this is where it was built. And all the way down to the south end of the building. And um, we have several evidences for it um, here present in 158. One is that when the late wall, late west wall, this is feature 622 in the northern part uh, was built. We had this feature 171, which is uh, probably a working surface with some uh, basins on both sides to hold certain materials that were used to maybe food making or grinding or, or something like that. This feature was built right against the wall, the late west wall. We can see the plaster of the late west wall that runs like that, like that, and goes further that way. Actually, yeah. And, um, and so the, the feature was built right um, against it. And at some point, because the late wall was um, coming in and was and broke this feature in several several places and probably brought m much more damage to the house as a whole. They decided to shore it up and so they put the shoring in on top of this feature and in front of the late west, west wall. And this is something that we have removed last year. So here we have a very late uh, floor uh, that was built in the house just before this feature was put in. And then this feature, this side of the feature went most likely like that. This is a ridge, an edge of it on the northern side, and then it went down that way. So it was same in the shape as the one on this side, but a little bigger. And um, uh, the idea that after this feature got out of use and the late west wall was shored with a shoring wall, that this part of uh, Space 158 was still in use and active. Uh, the evidence for that is the little bins that were most likely, most likely bins actually, or some uh, sort of storing uh, recipients were built in the, on the, uh, against the northern wall of the building and on top of the floor that this feature is on. So that is our evidence that we had a very late use of this building after the rest, the central part of the space was ceased to be used. And then we have here in the middle of the north, we have a big cut, which could be a burial cut. Now, 
uh, at a time when uh, the late west wall started collapsing and moving in in the house uh, we have uh, we had these pillars uh, also put in to hold the screen wall and uh, evidence for the pillars being built so late is that they lie and there's a little bit of the floor still preserved in this area we see that the pillars uh, lie on on this late floor of space 158 and also the evidence is that they were uh, shored up with uh, a lot of rubble on this side the same sort of rubble as the shoring wall was <coughs> built built off so the idea is that both of them were put in at the same time and then uh, down here in this animal hole we could see and later on we'll see even better we could see most likely the evidence of early internal wall this is a brick made of the same red clay as the bricks we see over there in the original wall and this would be the plaster of the brick so the original internal wall most likely was just under this wall in the same space but is deeper down um, I think that's right. The original size and shape of the pillar that held the early screen wall. We still don't have too much evidence for the early screen wall, but there is some. There seems it seems to be going deeper down on this on this side. So we'll get to it later. But the original shape in, and size is something that we see here. It's sort of uh, rectangular but roundish on the corners, and we see remains of paint on top of it so that would most likely be the top surface of the original one and then later on they shored it up and propped it up and so it was taller than uh, in the later stages and that was probably necessary because trying to block off this whole space from the view um, from the main room yeah we can stop here Okay, so we're still looking at a pillar which is feature 156 and we're looking at the end part of the internal wall which is feature 160, I believe. And um, uh, the w our, our idea was that the internal wall was built very early in the history of this house, probably at the very beginning, but it seems we are getting more and more evidence for, its really for it being built later. Mm -hmm in the history of the building, which may only mean that the earlier interla internal wall was in the same place, but this is the rebuilding of it in the late stage. Th our evidence in this part of the internal wall is that it's really sitting on top of the rubble of this shoring of the wall, and we know that the shoring uh, was put in uh, at a late stage after, say, the, the floor phase D, or right in the beginning of, of uh, floor phase D. And so this, these remains, which is uh, mortar uh, brick, mortar brick, are lying, overlapping here with the rubble. And so the idea is we will look further for the evidence over there in the remaining part of the internal wall. The idea is that this was put at the same time when the rubble um, on the pillar. Okay. Feature 160 internal wall, feature uh, 156 the pillar, and we see here how they are all. Okay, this is feature northern part of feature 171, uh, and was damaged and was east-west section uh, through the uh, feature 622 shows original bricks at the bottom. Uh, midden in space 85, uh, just west of uh, uh, feature 622. <laughs> no science here. <laughs> no science here, right? All right, how about it? Ready? I thought he was just your backup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm standing on the edge of the Buck area uh, on the 9th of August, uh, standing between Ruth Tringham and Mira, and uh, we're going to have an interpretive tour. Actually, he's standing on the eastern edge, okay. which is sort of important, looking out to the opening. Great. We're going to have a tour. Okay. Okay. So, why don't we start off with the grand global picture, what am I looking at? What kind of building or buildings am looking I seeing? Looking at the Bach area. <laughs> Bach, Berkeley archaeologist Bach. at Chateau do you How do you pronounce yes. the CH? The Bach area. Bach. It so should be the Bach area. Like actually. 
<laughs> Johann Sebastian. Anyway, the, this Bach area consists of a number of different spaces that were recognized by the surface scraping. So they were recognized right on the surface. And um, they include space 86 here, this big uh, part of building 3, and its smaller part of space 158. So that's the main, what we consider the main um, building here. It's a complete building. Then to its south are three small rooms here, and they go space 89, space 88, and then 87 over there in the corner. And there's one more designated space which is relevant to this conversation, and that's over there where, um, in the uh, north uh, northwest corner, which is the uh, midden area, and that's called space 85. Where I see some sort of ashy deposits yes, there in the corner. Yes, you do, right. exactly. Good okay. looking! Hey, I've been around a while, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, now, obviously, there's a great deal going on in this, in, in this building, and it's also obviously quite large. So what are your ideas, you know, based on the work you've done about what use was made of it and, and why? So you don't want to talk about these first? Uh, I think I'd rather talk about this part first, unless mm, you think so there's a I. reason to talk about those I first. Mean, what about Mira? What do you think? Should we talk about these little ones first? Um, no, we can talk about this. Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, so we're talking about the larger building first. The larger building. What was it used for? What do you think it was used for? What do I think it was used what for? What do you think it was and why? It was building. <laughs> it was used... I would say the interpretive process is already <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, we know that it was a building and we are pretty sure that it was there was some kind of residence. And... Um, we're, I think it's very. I personally think it's very likely that it changed its the kind of residence and the number of residents in it through time. It has a very long history um, of uh, reconfiguration, modification, repair, mm -hmm. and so on. And then it also seems to have quite a long history of collapse and abandonment. Okay. So, um, what else? <laughs> okay, we need to get you warmed up, obviously, here. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, this building is, is pretty large in the scheme of things. I've just suddenly line. thought, maybe it would be better to start with the details. Okay. You know, people work better from, like, you well, that's journalists. Why, that's why I asked you, you which way you wanted to well, do it. Well, yeah. you journalists tend to work from the detailed to the big. Sometimes. That gets you warmed up. Okay, go ahead. I've noticed you always work with, you start with somebody's life and... <laughs> This is what little Johnny felt as, this, he, as he excavated. <laughs> so, you know, as, you ex as he excavated the detail and then... Okay. Okay. You, you do it the way you feel most okay, comfortable let's doing let's go down. It, in the way it seems logical to you. Oh, well... <laughs> okay, we've walked down into the building now. Um, actually, since we are going to start with the details, maybe I should really say about... Uh, uh, grand picture a little bit, and then we can go into the <laughs> okay. I can't believe you did that. Uh, well, that was my only way of pushing you. <laughs> 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 joking, joking. No, no. Joking. No. My leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see that the Bach team thinks with one mind. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's so the first thing to learn. Right. Sure. Um, yeah, I would agree completely that we uh, can see a lot of changes here in the history, through the history of this house. But mm -hmm. what's interesting is that uh, even though we have this idea about the Neolithic life as pretty stable and uniform and uh, uh, the buildings and the features inside the buildings, the furniture and everything else stays always the same. It's built in these hard materials such as clay mm -hmm. and therefore it's really uh, stable. You can't move it around. We get this feeling about this or stability and mm -hmm. uniformity. But when you look through a history of one house, like this one, for instance, which really had a very uh, long history, you see that there's a lot of change through time, a lot of change in terms of where they move, where they um, have different activities, and they mm -hmm. rebuild their platforms and their ovens and things like that in different places in the house. So there is more uh, movement uh, then and change uh, than we thought there was. 
Can and you give me kind of an idea of what right. some of the big changes have been? Um, right. I mean, just a couple of examples, maybe. Exactly. So, for instance, uh, at one point in time, um, where's your microphone? Go? I, it's here. What I, I just want to where, add something where, before hi, she starts. Where, how do you sit here? Wait, let me just to be an oven. <laughs> let me okay. let me just add. What's really funny is that we have this. When we first started excavating this house we had this idea of it's nice four walls mm -hmm. and you know you have this idea of the predictability at least of four solid outside walls and each time that we've we as we excavate we come across all these these changes and it's kind of gives you a jolt because you've got to quickly change your ideas of what you thought was assumed and predictable right. into something that they did and that's what Mira is going to show you, because okay. it kind of gives you a jolt, and sometimes it sends you into a depression for a day or two. And <laughs> 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 okay. Who gets more depressed, so you or Mira? I get more depressed. Ruth points to Mira. <laughs> <laughs> Mira and that's because out. Ruth doesn't <laughs> care, <laughs> because she knows that I will get depressed. Get, we're getting <laughs> lots of community to. stuff here, I yeah, Well, anyway, this, is, this wall had changed three times. Okay, now we're looking at the wall. Tell me what direction. West, west looking wall. at the west wall. Okay, west, of the east, north, north right. south. Got it. Okay, so this is the west wall. You have we your have north sign there in case ah, you lose it. Okay. Right. Okay. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary west wall through mm -hmm. the history of this house, which meant that this whole space, this big room, had to change its, its function. At first, it was a place for storage and preparation of food, most likely in this area. There was an mm -hmm. oven in the south southeast corner of this space. However, later... Where Heidi is sitting Where Heidi is sitting. Yeah. See that the burnt, scorched soil, uh, earth? Yeah. That's where the oven was. However, later on, because this wall had a problems, most likely because it was being pushed by the midden that ac accumulated on, the, uh, on that side, mm -hmm. on the west side, uh, they had to close off, in a way, this space. So they built here a screen wall. They, okay. this, you can imagine this as a wall going almost all the way up to the ceiling. It's kind of a thin <laughs> wall, and well, it has the painting on it? Yes. Is this is included here? Yeah, yeah, right. And this, there was a thin line of plaster here that was applied on the planks that were put in the row right here. So this was a screen wall. This room changed, the west side of the building changed its use. Uh, the, the center was not in use anymore. The very northwest was used for storage. We had bins over there still in mm -hmm. this latest state. And the southwest yeah. was used also for storage. We had a niche in that very corner where they were keeping fruits and nuts. Okay. This is what we have found in our botanical sample. Mm -hmm. So the, the middle point, the center point, was not in use anymore at that that's okay. one example. Okay. However, there are more examples. Then we assumed that this, the screen wall then was, was um, actually relatively early. At first we assumed all these two small walls at each end were relatively uh -huh. um, solid and part of the original structure. And so we kind of built our whole story around that. Right. And then just now that had to change. That would right. be another good example. Right, right. that means that... Uh, that they had at the point, at the last point, when, uh, when they built the last west wall, the shoring wall, to mm -hmm. and, and on decided to continue living in, in this house, even though it seemed that they had a lot of trouble with the west wall, mm -hmm. they needed to replace also the internal wall. And so they built on top of the old uh, uh, internal walls that, that they truncated, most likely. We will mm -hmm. see that later. Now it's not obvious, but we have some little animal holes through which we can peek down and see uh -huh. what had happened. And so they probably truncated the old walls and then built these new ones on top of, of uh, the old ones. Okay. So you think that there was some kind of a decision process going on here about whether to abandon this house or whether to keep it going? Yeah, probably. I would say so because the northern part of the secondary west wall, once mm -hmm. the, the original wall started having troubles, the northern part of this uh, secondary wall was put in very nicely and it seemed, it looked to us until a couple of days ago that it, mm -hmm. it, this was the part of the original wall. Okay. Uh, however, we discovered that this was the secondary wall. So that part was put in nicely, but the rest of that secondary west wall in this area was not as nice as that. Okay. So it's quite possible that they started off doing it properly, thinking, okay, we'll mm -hmm. build another solid west wall on top of the old one 
But then for some reason that decision was changed and they thought, okay, we don't have to spend so much time on it. We can, um, you know, build a less um, well mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the world because anyway we are going to move out of this place the place in a while, but yet they decided to stay in India, and we know that because they had this shoring wall later on, even later mm -hmm. in time, put in front and, and blocked off this whole room from the rest of the house. Now the problem here, which we have not solved at all, is how the roof was, was standing in place, okay. because, because of all these changes of the west wall and internal walls, what was holding the roof in the Mm -hmm. of the building. Would the roof have had to have been taken down to make any of these changes? Or? Um, yeah, that's a possibility. Right. That is a possibility. But okay. but it would have been a lot of work. I, I doubt it. I think it probably would have... I they would have done it all underneath. They would have held it up with no, maybe I temporary... Think that's, a, that's a feasible possibility because they we know here from the ethnographic examples that they replaced their roofs and the, uh, at least the layers of clay on top of the roofs and the vegetable materials that they put on the roof, they replace mm -hmm. them, not annually, but every so often. So it's possible that these people just dismantled the roof and then uh, rebuild the wall and put the roof back. But uh, however, uh, the contrary evidence is that the remains of the roof that we have found inside the building uh, after the building was abandoned show mm -hmm. that the roof lasted for a very, very long time. Okay. It was yeah, very that's what thick I was and had right. many layers of, uh, of clay and use and so forth. So it's maybe more likely that it was... Re-roof kind of... Re -roof re -roof yeah. So. Okay. And this area may not, in, in the final phase, may not have been roofed at all. Okay, interesting. Which is, Possibly I mean, the possible, the, the evidence. Not so sure. the ev no, I no, think the evidence for that is that. <laughs> he wants <an> argument. <laughs> I think the evidence for that is that. I don't, I don't want it, but I want to spot <laughs> it when it's there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you finish. With, 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 sorry, go ahead. Oh, after you. Okay. You obviously, I was going to tell you why I thought that Please that do. may have been open. Please do, go ahead. Because the roof, when we found it, was in um, was just in this area in this space okay. the one that the one that collapsed okay. which is one of the final phase one of the final events of right. this building and no trace of it over no. here okay would this be a good point to ask you the question that I sort of started off with I, am I right in having the impression that this is a very large building in the scheme of things in Chabu Koyukian terms um, or am I wrong? No, I think it's I think it's not much not much smaller or bigger rather than building one or five. Okay. And what about mm -hmm. the south compared to the south area? <coughs> well, it's larger than an average building here. It's not very very large, no. but it's, it's larger, okay. slightly larger than an average. So yeah, it's large uh, in a sense. Uh, it is large. It looks larger because it doesn't have internal division of space. It's yeah. sort of very open, and. Um, it's unusual in, um, uh, in, in the scheme of Mallard's uh, uh, patterning, that the patterning that he had noticed in the buildings mm -hmm. in the south, uh, we don't have the same patterning of the uh, activities in the house, in, in, in our house, uh, building three. So it's, a new, it's not really one of Mallard's typical houses at all, yes. even though when he came to visit here two years ago... He thought ago, it was a shrine. Yeah, when he saw it, he said that this <laughs> was a shrine. And right. ha partly that had to do with this whole um, screen wall area, which mm -hmm. you, you can't see anymore, which ha was had this huge um, area of plaster, white plaster on it, and, and may have been part of a sculptured, a sculptured okay. facade, okay. and the red wall there. Right. So that kind of was... Let me just ask Mira on what you were just saying. In terms of the different patterns of use in this mm. house, I mean, mm -hmm. just briefly at any rate, what would be the main differences between the Mellark area? Well, uh, one of the important ones would be that the, the main platform uh, that, that, that carries this symbolic uh, meaning in the house potentially the painted, would with be the, paint the painted platform one with the painted walls, and very yeah. white, and the most elevated one, the highest one in mm -hmm. the house would have been in that corner rather than in this corner, as we in right. the northeast rather than in the northwest. Okay. For That's the one that and always has the final burial. Right. Right. Yeah. And then in this, pre in the in the early uh, phase of this building, uh, we had uh, the oven in the southwest, and usually the ovens should be in the s southeast. Okay. And um, you know there are many 
small things I can't now remember, to be honest. But can you are. remind me? I, I know it's all in the database, but can you remind me about the dating um, of this of this building here and what kind of dates you have? It's actually not in the database, really. Oh, isn't it? Okay. No, because um, we only have we have virtually no pottery from this building. Okay. Um, but what pottery we have found was mostly from the midden, which was after the abandonment mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that that's an probably, upper it's an upper level with yeah. upper kind of date, right. which is, um, it's around about, uh, what is it, around about 6,000. Calibrated or uncalibrated? Uh, calibrated. Okay. So um, that means it's later, that midden 6, is later BC than building calibrated. one, right, yeah. it's later than building one. Okay. But it's, um, but that would mean it's that the, the but the, yeah. what, um, the pottery that has been found from these deposits here make it seem as though it's somewhere between building one and mm -hmm. building five, the yeah, actual right. occupation. Okay. Right. So it's, it's kind of um, in Melart six, uh, early six, late seven. Okay. That will be it. Okay. But also we are hoping to have uh, many more uh, uh, datings of this house because mm -hmm. we've been collecting right. a very good charcoal sample for dendrochronology which mm -hmm. come from the floors, between the floors of different floor levels oh in the okay. house. Okay. So we have had several of these samples from our platforms and from the center of the house. Mm -hmm. So once those date, and they l they're in good shape, um, and they're rather big chunks with a lot of rings on them, so the dendro sampling, uh, I mean, chronology should be um, in improved of this house that way, and we should really know mm. in more detail how old this house exactly Who, who's, who's doing the dendrochronology now? Is it the Oxford Union? Cooney or? Home in Co Cornell. Okay, Cornell. Okay. Mm. Great. And one member on our team, Laura. <laughs> Hello. <Laura. laughs> She actually Laura Steele worked we're talking Laura about, Steele, since yeah, she's, she's, she's off, off camera, oh, not she's on camera, but she's off mic. <laughs> right. She worked she in his lab. Yeah, she is helping uh, uh, in the lab, and okay. she's also helping us here um, collect the samples in a, the most proper fashion, okay. so we don't so lose any So you're working on some of the dendrochronology stuff? Okay, that's right, we talked about that, yeah. yeah. Now, did you say, would this be a good moment? You, I don't think you had... Um, Finish telling me about some of the kind of shocking things yeah, that you're finding here. Yeah. No, no, no. In, no. in uh, changes in use that you're finding in the space that we're hiding, which well, is the north, uh, sorry, southeast, south east. southwest, southwest, southwest corner. Right. <laughs> right. Get oriented eventually. Well, what what we can tell you? <laughs> just say here. Okay. This is um, this is where the old wall was, very old wall, and they put in the new wall, and then they built this nice, um, what do you call it, uh, niche that we have the last remains of it in here, and you can see at the floor of the niche when it's it, it, it's been removed now more mm -hmm. or less, and uh, the floor of the niche was right on top of this oven. It's very nice how they use the oven, the earlier oven, because it's flat and it's strong surface and it and then build this niche on top of that so you know it there is only like one two centimeters difference in uh, height between the two between the the early use which is this uh, oven and the late use which was the niche that was on top of that and yeah. so, so it's amazing how in these thin layers of floors and between the floors you can um, you can see consider, uh, considerable difference in use mm -hmm. of space. Uh, and then yet if you look a uh, little more around here, you'll see many, many other floor layers. And and these are we going see sort of, um, I guess what you might call depressions or something like that. Yeah, this floor. is one, one cut that was made in the right. floor. But what it shows in its uh, walls is this number of the layering of these so phases. What it means is that if you might only have a few centimeters or even less than a centimeter between features or floors or say between the, mm -hmm. the oven and the niche, but it actually represents a great deal, of, could represent a great deal of time yeah. and other kinds of changes. We've got, I mean, how many centimeters roughly is it between this lower part and the upper part? Um, say five. Five centimeters. Mm. So that five centimeters could represent what would, you know, could what would be a range of time? Uh, with several decades. Se yes. Really? Yeah. Several okay. floors. But there, there are better, there is a better yeah. place to look at this sort of thing. Um, in this, in this, 
Okay, so now we're looking at the platform that has the paint, painted right. wall. Right. Where can I step? Just where you just did? Yeah, you can step. Oh, actually, I'll stay right here. Yeah. Okay, let me go. Over here. Okay, right if Anne Marie moves a little bit, we'll be able to see. Anne Marie? Okay. Oh, she's. Are you at a delicate stage? No. Hmm. Okay. okay. She's doing a micromorphology sample so that we can get actual, make thin section through the floors. Okay, so Mira is now actually in this. Um, what oh, I'll probably have to get down. This is a burial pit. A burial pit, right. Move my stuff. <laughs> How many skeletons did you find in here? Uh, we found or individuals? We, had, we found here in the central part that, that we are looking at right now one individual. It was a, a child, a three or four years old child that was buried in a basket, in a okay. flex position, and then put in a basket and okay. then put down in this burial. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is probably this is the most important platform in the house in the. Uh, in terms of the Neolithic people. So we, what we can see here, we can see that this house started, the first floor appeared at this level on top of the uh, midden that is underneath the house, mm -hmm. uh, underneath probably the entire house or, or most of the house, which is all the midden, which represents the fill of the house below this house. Right. So on top of all of that, we have a floor that begins there, and then we have this gray layer on top of which we have a nice white line of plaster, yeah. another floor, then we have a brown layer of packing, these are packing layers, with a nice white line of floor on top of which we have uh, a remains of use of this floor, this blackish material, a thin line. And then we have a big change. So everything that I have said so far is sort of expected gradual change through time. Mm -hmm. Just just for the tape, I'm, I'm just going to describe this. We've got um, a series of quite nicely defined layers. Um, is the white material plaster? It then? is plaster. So we have sort of thin lines of plaster. We have thicker layers, um, kind of browns and kind of ashy colored things and so yes. on. Okay, yes. go ahead. Okay, and then after those two, three floors basically, and two packing, we have a huge difference, which is this thick layer that's about uh, at least four times thicker that the packing that is at least four times thicker than the packing mm -hmm. below. And not just that it's thicker, on top of which we have another solid white plaster floor which mm. has a, a, a thicker layers of plaster as well. But not only that it's thicker, but it's all a different kind of packing. It's all sort of burnt materials or very red and orange type of clay that are mixed with this right. brownish clay that indicates to us that because this packing was, is quite different, that means that there's something happened in the house that made these people uh, build up such a large uh, layer of packing and uh, made of these stronger materials, generally burnt clay and burnt uh, fragments of floors and things like that. Mm -hmm. When they are used as packing, they indicate that there was need to make a stronger, more stable right. surface on which to build or a higher platform. Or higher platform. So you've got the same right. thing between B2 and C. Right. You, so you uh, say that something happened in the house. I mean, do you have any ideas about what happened that right. required that? Well, uh, for this period, we are not sure yet. Mm -hmm. But there is uh, the period above it is, again, another big uh, packing layer with a lot of burnt material. And this time, it's really seriously burnt material written that there. Uh, we can say that. Mm -hmm. And that layer with the floor, very thick white floor on top, that packing of burnt, burnt material, we can see in other areas of the house. We can see okay. in other pits, m at least in half of the house, if not the entire house is lying on such layer of burnt material, which most likely will turn out to be uh, a result of some burning in this house that happened somewhere, we don't know yet where, which probably is related to uh, the damage on the west wall and the need to change the west wall and all that. We know that from some other examples uh, from the houses here at Chateauhuyuk that people often, uh, that the Neolithic people would have uh, burned or fired the west wall of their building and mm -hmm. then they would do a big remodeling of the house if they decided to continue in living in the same place. Okay. So we might actually have a similar situation, but we will know that once we go um, 
um, you know, remove this floor level that we are at now and start looking right. at it. So you're, you are actually now starting to excavate yes. this, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's not too bad in a way. You should wear the sticker depending to kind of have to lean down. No, but you. but you can... I mean, do you think that there was an, uh, you know, just what's just the technical, an uncontrolled, uh, uncontrolled uh, fire in here um, at some point? Mm, yeah. Well, uh, it depends on uh, to what extent um, the house was fired. Actually, no, no, cut that out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Often we have, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, um, for instance, over in Building 1, they hypothesized a deliberate burning of one area okay. in order to uh, actually take it out of use. Right. Take that area out of use, and that might be the kind of thing that we're dealing with, for instance. Okay, I'll hold uh, it. Here. But um, so it's it's really hard to tell. Right. You know, we can speculate why they what this burn material means, but it, we can't really speculate very seriously until we see how large it is, where it's located, right. where it actually started. So one of your hopes is to actually sort of see the extent of that. Well, yeah, yeah. we'd like to see if it's a burned in situ. We'd like right. to kind of do a fire plan. Okay. But otherwise, we'll, we'd like to see where it where it started, where it's coming from. Okay. And then we can begin to sort of say serious, it make a serious interpretation. But right now, it's not, s it's not serious, it's not worth anything. Okay, fair but, enough. But we can, we in terms of the changes, uh, specifically in this platform, we can, uh, we can say that the, the we have, um, in the late use of the pla platform, we have this nice uh, painting of the wall above it, and maybe to some extent the platform as well. And then we had several layers of this. We had a layer of white plaster be being applied on top of that mm -hmm. uh, a painted plaster. And then after that, again, uh, plaster on top of that painted. So it's the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one is painted and then not painted and painted and not painted. So we can see several layers of that sort. And we certainly know that at the end of use of the use of this house, they plastered everything white and then they abandoned the house. At least mm -hmm. they plastered this area white. And this is something that was noticed at other houses at Chaturbuyuk. Right. So the paintings that are covered. That, yeah, the, the painting would be covered before the house was abandoned. And the roof fell on the clean floor. Mm -hmm. So that we also know there's, yeah. there was very little debris Where, where on exactly the floor. was the uh, roof collapse? Just, um, it was centered just here. Okay. And came around in this, oh sorry. Yeah centered just here and then came around in this area. And so it was basically in the yes. northern part of the building. Sort of just um, northeast of this platform that we've been talking about. Basically. Yeah, this, this platform wasn't really damaged. The, the roof came to about here. Okay, to the so edge this, of the platform, this platform was one of the few that wasn't damaged. That was the one that was most damaged. Right. By the way, while I'm at it, um, can you just sort of show me where the two touching skulls were found? They were just where the blue bucket is, I think. Just actually a little um, to the north of that. The blue bucket is uh, uh, over up here. Over here. This is just, just over here. Over here. Over here. The Ukrainian thing was about here. Okay. So this, the roof. So we're kind of actually sort of, kind of pretty much in the center of the house. In the center of the house. The That's roof. Exactly. The roof came to, to about here, to the center, and then the Ukrainian was right on on the roof, right at the edge of it. And then the, the two skulls were just to the south of the roof. Okay. So it's east, west, west sorry. Mm. Now, since this is an interpretive tour, um, in terms of the plastering over of the paintings just uh, with white plaster before the house was abandoned, um, could we make an obvious of that as a preservation of the paintings? or? Are there alternative ways of looking at that, or what are your ideas about that in terms of the abandonment? You want to go first, or shall I? Go ahead. Oh, I think that probably means that um, the red painting was not going to be... I don't think it was a question of preserving it. I think it was a question of making it white. And okay. all over, I think they probably cleaned the house before, um, before they dismantled it. I s it seems to me that it was a probably a deliberate dismantling. Okay. So, in other words, it wasn't, it was to basically efface the, the painting rather than to preserve it in a way. Is that the thing like to, to cover it? They didn't think of defacing. 
the painting when they covered it, they were just making a new layer. That's what I think. Okay. They were making, it was a new statement. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a statement of covering the old. That had different meaning at a different time. Okay. And th so this was a, yeah. this was something, making a new statement. Well, I mean, the reason I'm raising that question. Um, she might have a different <laughs> interpretation. Okay, yes, Mira, yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's get your two things. Okay. okay, I sort of agree, but I would like also to say that I think that there is probably the relationship between the painted walls on this platform and possibly the burials, some right. uh, below the platform, this very platform, or maybe some other platform in the house. And so if that is so, then uh, in order, when you decide, when they decided to abandon the house, they would probably feel that they are protecting their dead. Okay. They're abandoning the house, they're protecting their dead by covering this pain that is an important indicator, an obvious indicator of what went on right in this place or in this house. So it's sort of protection. I would see it that way. Well, because that, that was I, what I was sort of getting at, was whether, I mean, this is maybe getting a little bit far afield, but since we're trying to interpret, whether the abandonment, obviously they're leaving the skeletons and the ancestors and, right. and, and so forth and the babies and everybody, and they're abandoning the house and then they're building up. Mm -hmm. So um, this so issue is, that, so seems that, quite critical. Yeah, I think that that would be, I, I think, you know, I would agree with that, but following on, I would say that actually covering it all in white, mm -hmm. the whole, this platform and then some of the others, what they're what they do each time is to make a, a lid over the burial, which is a kind of plastered material, okay. which is actually quite hard to, unless you're looking for it, it's quite hard to see. Mm -hmm. And then if they plaster over that, then you really can't see right. any burials at all. Okay. Like down this, in this platform here, we're pretty sure there are some burials, but we can't, pos we can't see where they are, because right. they're plastered. No, the other platform, which is north, sort of northeast center of yes, the building. Yes, that's right. And that one on the top layer, on its uh, top two floors, we had no idea th of that burial. North in the northeast. Top corner, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we had no idea of that burial until we we began to clean like the third right. floor, and then we could see possible cracking. That's a sort of telltale sign, cracking, and then this funny kind of surface underneath, like the lid of the burial. Okay. So they. There's one of the interesting things is, one of the interesting questions is, was the lid enough to hide it when they were living there? Mm -hmm. And then when they replastered, or did they replaster the whole thing so that it was really impossible to see? Okay. So that's, that's not what we're not quite sure yet. Right, but in okay. terms, well, can I can I give you another yeah. example of, in terms of the deliberate um, strategic actions in the house, say, mm -hmm. uh, Almost everything that went on in the house in terms of building and, and activities was quite well organized, I would say, in my mind, and quite strategically done. So one of the, um, uh, another example is the midden that we had in the southern p south part of the house. Okay. And before that midden was uh, being deposited there, what they did in this kitchen area, they simply made a uh, sort of a cut in the floor of the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And the first, the primary uh, midden deposits that we found right on the floor were a number of large animal bones, such mm -hmm. as scapula, and that's why we call this area scapularium. From what, and, from what animals? Uh, they are mostly cattle, and although there are some deer bones, and, um, and there was a... a yeah, girl or something. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. a donkey. Uh, and then uh, not only that they were deposited here, but they were also wrapped up in a vegetal or, or, or basket-like material mm. before they were deposited. On top of that, we then had uh, a large accumula accumulation of other deposits mm -hmm. that uh, collected through time, through long time of using this area as a midden area. But I'm saying that, that they were... They knew exactly what they wanted and they w would be doing with this area. And okay. this was like a sort of symbolic marking of the area. We think by putting these bones in place before they started accumulating other rubbish, basically, okay. on top of it. There's uh, another interpretation for that, and that is okay. that they symbolically marked the, this abandonment of the house with mm -hmm. a big feast. 
Okay. And that's what all of the bones represent. That's this is one, one of, of Riss's ideas Yes, too, right. right. It's a Riss, right. This is Riss's. Okay. It's an, another interpretation, which is sort of very similar. You know, it's still a symbolic right. marking. But, or so by feasting, then taking the feasting remains and putting them in baskets. And putting them and putting here. Because yeah. that, then, and the, uh, the abandonment or the deposition of rubbish mm -hmm. in this area, as Mira says, is really, you know, it's very deliberate. And it mm -hmm. probably is full of meaning yeah. as well. Different kinds of rubbish for different parts of the house. Okay. Right. By the way, what, uh, mm. just to make sure I see what I'm I mean, I see a fair, some fairly, mm. I guess, okay. too obvious sort of, what are we calling them now? Hearths? We don't call them <laughs> fire installations anymore. Yeah, hearths. <laughs> <heart. laughs> so these, these two and here too as well? Right. Okay. Yeah, well, what tell we me what I'm looking what at looking What we are yeah. seeing, we are seeing our kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a very concrete and very good division, a visual division between the kitchen area and the center of the house. Okay. And there a is wall, this basically. step. This is this step. Oh, so this isn't a wall. Okay. Right. So when, if, if this was completely clean, which right. it was, is not at the moment because there's a lot of work going on on it, you could see a white um, step-like mm -hmm. little uh, lip on the ground that divides this so-called um, uh, dirty sooty, area sooty of the area. house from, yeah, <laughs> from okay. so-called clean area. But even, <coughs> even this so-called dirty area of the house was lined at some point at the base with a very nice white floor. Mm -hmm. We know that below all of these remains of a lot of burning and cooking and stuff, we had a very nice white floor at okay. the bottom. Uh, we will arrive on it eventually. Mm. So, so, see these little circles? Oh, yeah. These little dots? These sort of little depressions in the floor. Yes, they go around up here. Okay. And then in circle, yeah. see how white right. it is. Yes. Oh yeah, it's all beautifully white. It's all plastered. Mm -hmm. The whole floor was plastered, and then, um, then these uh, kitchen, so-called kitchen features, were put in. And we have here the the main one of the main ovens or hearts in the house. Mm -hmm. We have not found the the uh, superstructure of it, but we have some evidences of potential superstructure, which like is these little holes yes. in the stake ground. holes, stake yeah, holes which. Which would have been part of the uh, construction that, that went above the heart. Yeah. So would they have held up some sort of a screen or a, a clay well, cover? Well, if they are what we think, <coughs> they, if it is what we think it is, which we mm -hmm. know from uh, the Balkan archaeology, they would have this uh, superstructure made of sort of wattle and daub type of, uh, you know, wattling, wattling in clay. Wattling. Wattle. Basket. Ah, okay. Basket-like structure Sorry. covered a, with clay just a, a deficiency in my vocabulary and the big the, um, you might be kind of getting sort of interested in these big holes i am they curious about nice those yeah. their animals okay they go for well, so much right. for, so much for that it, yes right okay. but then in addition to that we had a nice floor back behind the oven that yeah. our anna is working now on which is also contains remains of uh, food making also ash and there's charcoal, lots of ash and, and yeah, of burning exactly. and things, yeah everything was yeah and there are they most likely they were very often replastering this area we know from some ethnographic examples that people would on a daily basis even replaster the area around their oven the heart where they yeah. make food and that would be a, a, a job of a woman young woman in the house who would then mm -hmm. s uh, start a fire and then replaster with very thin layer the surface around the oven and uh, we are finding a lot a lot of uh, such fine layers of clay of replastering here okay. as well what would be by the way what would be the key ethnographic model for what you just said or the key um well the this uh, source comes from um Kazakhstan or some place mm -hmm. like that. I can't remember now exactly, but it's uh, yeah in Central East okay. um, Asia. And then and then another uh, part of the kitchen is uh, this platform. So again, yeah. we have Which a raised to the right surface. of the or rather yeah. so the right. of the area that we were talking about. Southwest right. space. Yeah. Okay. And so what you see here, we have a number of hearts, remains of hearts that mm -hmm. we cleaned out, and we now see just their cuts, and we see the burnt surface under them. But uh, in the beginning, this platform was nice and white and probably ended uh, right here, like one meter away from the internal wall. Mm -hmm. But then later on, this whole area was added, and this was the area that was heavily used for mm -hmm. making food. 
and we had uh, one a little heart here and we had another one here that probably was used differently because the it was um, the the fire pattern on it is slightly different mm -hmm. and you can see the mouse of it you see this is like raised area and raised area and this is the main central area where they burned a fire had fire and then taking the ashes out that way okay um yeah so this is another very active area in terms of food preparation in the house okay What's going on over here in this corner where there seems to be a, uh, well like that a post hole? Yeah, that used to be a post in there, but okay. that's a little post retrieval pit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is that the mark of where the post was? Yeah, this, curving is area? yeah this is the mark. This post was very nicely set in the plaster of the internal wall and mm -hmm. screen wall, and you still can see the marks of it. Very um, regular round uh, marks, and we can see how deep it went. It actually went down to here someplace. Yeah. You, can see the, you can see there the wall doesn't come right down to these, this yeah. early floor. This yeah. right. wall is yeah. later. W would that have been a post for the roof or for, s for something uh, else? Uh, I think it was for the. S it had to do with the screen wall, but it, it might could have. have yeah, roof. yeah, it right. could have or been. The used roof that didn't extend that right. way. Yeah. Right. right. And we there might be another one over in that corner. Another hole. Do you want to talk about this one? This yeah, this is the entrance. Did you? Ah, well, yeah. do you have questions? Maybe we shouldn't just force yeah. you into our. Um, um, oh, go ahead and force here. me into <laughs> your scheme. <laughs> do that, or I'll have to force you into mine. So this was uh, most likely the entrance into the house where Anna is sitting right oh, now okay, with so all her bags uh, and and covers and coats and stuff. Uh, end of the of where the kitchen is. Okay, the kitchen area. Right. Hmm. Right. So this would have been the entrance <coughs> into the house, and this is where the ladder most likely was. And we know that by uh, how the surface uh, floor was eroded and how many times it, it was patched up and replastered and so forth. And we had also indentations mm -hmm. in a regular places from most likely from ladder. We think that one uh, post mm -hmm. for ladder was uh, in the beginning maybe in this area, a labor later got uh, moved to that area. So mm -hmm. one of them would be there. And uh, another one would be somewhere here in this part, uh, mm -hmm. close to the wall. And then you would have a ladder going above the fire installation somewhere. Mm -hmm. The opening in the roof w would be in this area roughly, so that the uh, smoke could go out the same way as the people would go out and in. Is this kind of indentation in the wall that I'm seeing here, is mm. that deliberate or is that a, a result of, of, yeah. of collapsing in this direction? Well, the, the wall had moved the in a little bit. You see mm -hmm. how it's, it moved in and that's one of the reasons that it looks this way. But uh, there is a possibility that below this floor we will find an oven in this place because we have this indentation in the wall which is typical for the ovens in other houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's quite possible that in the earlier periods of the house uh, we would find that the oven was right there, set into the f mm -hmm. uh, wall. Or else if that is not the case, then uh, we'll see maybe it's, there is another little niche in there. If uh, that's not so, then we'll just have to settle that with the idea that the, the, the wall had a lot of problems and, and had um, sort of moved in in the upper part. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, <coughs> now, by the way, this what is this kind of strange platform that's kind of next to where the it's opening was? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looked, uh, it was a very nice step-like platform that had a higher and lower step in mm. the beginning. In the, uh, not in the beginning, but rather in the, during the late use of the house. Right. But when we started removing those floors, we could see that it is, uh, it was damaged many times in the past. These are the cuts uh, that the prehistoric people made. Mm -hmm. And they, and, and because if this was really the entrance area into the house, then there was a lot of walking on top of this platform and it would have a lot of damage and uh, needed a lot of repair. And these cuts and the, the packings that were put in these cuts later on indicate that they repaired it many times mm -hmm. in a very serious way. They need to make a cut, take parts of this uh, damaged flo floor out and then put new and strong packing with a new floor on top. 
Okay. And but at one point it was made of very nice white, soft white mm -hmm. lime like plaster. And yeah, uh, it was painted. It was sort of recently really? plastered just before the abandonment too. Okay. It had big but not big painted. layer I'm not painted but mm. plastered. Mm. Big layer of white plaster on top, all in this corner. Mm. This is a post retrieval pit. So another post big retrieval. post there and another one in the here. These further further in, uh, north, yeah, yeah, on the same side of the building. Mm -hmm. oh, they're awfully big, these post retrieval pits. Yeah, they're yeah. big. Well but the they posts were very deep. Down. Right. Yeah. And they had a lot of plaster molding around them. And we can see that that was the case. Because if you look at these, this lump of plaster, and we can see here from how this wall plaster looks that there was a molding going around, if not all the way around, and certainly mm. around the sides of uh, the post and in this case as well. Yeah. So because there was a lot of molding and... You can see the white plaster there. Oh, yeah. Right, you can see this going out like that. And then in this area as well, we had um, plaster coming out like that. And it's quite possible that we had uh, also Bukrania, uh, or the cattle skulls with horns, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere on, the w or on these uh, posts, because we did have in the higher levels, we did find horns in the same area but mm -hmm. not in situ and in this pit we excavated a huge mass of molded uh, plaster okay so can you just repeat what you said because the tape was just oh. automatically reversing I was going to say, yeah right Go ahead. so in this pit here we found um, a huge amount of modeling plaster sort of molded really? um, with uh, that kind of molding clay that it was molded that the plaster was covering and at first we thought it was um, all last year I thought it was going to be that I was going to find this fantastic sculpture of a, of a cow's head mm. that had fallen in, snout, snout down into the hole and been jammed in by the falling roof. But no such luck, huh? Well, when we brought it out, it was pretty shapeless blobs of, of clay. And, but it still isn't, it, it is still kind of some kind of sculpturing clay. Mm -hmm. or, or definitely the molding around the Remember post. around the post, yeah. Which or it may be something on top which fell in when they took took it out. Now, l let me ask you here, next to the sort of burial um, area that has the paintings, there's another one where Bashak is working. Are you excavating, Bashak? I am excavating. <laughs> she does. She excavates. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I always thought of you as a bone person, not an excavator. She's a very good excavator. I'm sure she is. Thank you. Um, are these contemporaneous, these two um, burial, burial areas? Or are they you want to talk about that and how it changed? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that the burial that we have over here... Next to the painting? Yeah, next to the painting is probably the latest burial in the, okay. in the building. But um, one of the problems is to, to actually um, see the relationship between the different platforms and their floors. Mm -hmm. And um, what we've found here is that this burial was probably from um, a floor just perhaps one, one above this one. Okay. And that this is certainly dug from, the, uh, from a period before a major configuration in terms of the platforms. So it, in terms of sort of major phases, they are contemporary. Right. But I think that this may be slightly earlier just because this seems to be the, the latest. It's, the, it's on the, um, it was dug from a floor which was um, clearly very clear, carefully prepared right at before yes. the collapse or the abandonment of the house. And here we can see something really nice that, that um, there's in this profile here, we can see that this platform you're standing on here right. at this level was actually came much further s uh, north, right all the way to here. And that in the floor immediately, or the period immediately after that here, this one actually was moved further south. So it's kind of sh in the shift in the configuration of the platforms may be significant. Okay. in terms of who's buried there and, and how important mm -hmm. it is and those kinds of things.
What um, now? The the baby in the basket was found here. Right. In the, um, where I keep Marie recording is. it to this right. Yeah. The, the painting, mm -hmm. the painted um, burial. And and what uh, human remains were found here? A um, a male, mm -hmm. adult, lying with in nice sort of crouched position, all bones present, I think. Okay. And his skull pretty squashed, but. Correct. Okay. Kind of present and one, here. one individual. Yeah, one individual. Okay. And now what we're seeing is there's another cut next to it here where there's probably a, a grave that was um, dug, that this one dug through because mm -hmm. we've got half of it exposed there. And the same here, there are, about, there are two or three graves probably present in the history of that platform. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that we have to try to reconstruct and link Okay. the different replasterings and phases in the floors with the different phases in burials. And right. It's very difficult. Can I add something to yeah. that? Um, also, another example of how well thought out every major action was uh, in, in the prehistory in this house is that at the bottom of both burials that we talked about, we can see the clay uh, floor-like surfaces, so they were placed on these surfaces, that this um, this male uh, skeleton was placed on this uh, very heavy and very thick uh, yeah. clay surface, which could be remains of all the floor or could be uh, the bricks that I were lined up yeah, the from early, their earlier uh, phase, early obviously. Yeah. yeah, and then in in the case of the uh, baby burial or a child burial, rather. We also, we are finding at the bottom of that uh, burial pit, a uh, nice thin uh, coat of clay as a floor mm -hmm. put in on top of which we found uh, um, the burial. So it might be that these uh, floors that I'm talking about are just an earlier floors of the house, but yet they did go all the way through uh, the layers and deposits yeah. down to that floor and then decided to stop and bury at that right. floor, not above it or below it. So that's an indication that they cared about what surface they're putting their dead on and they, you know, it was all well thought out right before they started doing it. I have to tell yeah. you a creepy story. Okay. We had, um, when we first excavated here, we had a, about five or six late Roman graves. Mm -hmm. um, the, the and they could all, s they, you know, they were pretty obvious on the surface of the ground, probably to these, mm -hmm. these people of this period. And they used the, um, they used the uh, walls and other, thing, other, other features to take advantage of that, to find softer areas to bury the dead. Mm -hmm. But one of the interesting things is that this grave here that's cut into the round baby burial is exactly in line with one of the Roman, oh, okay. with one of the late Roman graves, and you can see the cut of it there. Okay. Um, yeah, smaller. The it's much smaller, but it, it was actually in completely in line with it. Yeah. Listen, l let me ask you this, but I know it's breakfast time. Um, it is. It is it breakfast, is breakfast time. time. Yes, <laughs> which doesn't bother me any, but it probably bothers your team. It bothers uh, us. It bothers you. <laughs> um, obviously, this is poor planning because we needed more time. But I don't, I don't want to disrupt your schedule any more than, you know, than I already have. So the, I guess the question is whether we could continue a little bit maybe um, later, well, like before lunch. we practically lunch. covered everything except for those three cells in the back. Okay. I and mean, I do you think... I have questions about oh yeah? what's going on here in the service center. Okay. Well, maybe um, let's do it after breakfast or something. We it's I not... Can, can we make it 10.30 instead of 10? For, for our appointment. So could we come back at 10 o'clock and maybe finish between 10 and 10.30? Okay. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Continuing the Bach interpretive tour with Ruth Tringham and Mira Stevanovic. <laughs> and... Miriana Stevanovic. Miriana, yes, mm -hmm. but we know you, so we call you Mira. <laughs> um, and if we could just um, uh, conclude our tour of this building by talking about uh, some of the features that are the, at least those that are not animal burrows um, that we see here in kind of the central area of the building. Maybe uh, the thing I'm most curious about really uh, is this kind of the sloping orange, orange platform uh, in kind of beyond the screen in the in this other part of the building. But you just said uh, you wanted you were interested in this area. Well, Which I'm area in both. do you mean? Okay. Okay. Well, I, I just want to know what that is. You want basically. to know what that is. Oh, let's yeah. start with that then. And then and then move into this You'll area beneath our feet. You'll actually come back to that in your tape because she did talk about that later. Okay. But she she passed over it. Earlier. Okay. Earlier. earlier. I mean earlier. Whatever. Right. I did mention it. Yes. Right. 
Um, you want to talk about it? No, you talk um, about it. Well, I, it there. I, I, can, I can repeat more or less the same thing, that this is a, a quite elaborate feature that was uh, built uh, right um, against the w west wall, and mm -hmm. it was uh, has this central area which is sloping towards the center of the house, and it's flat and open, and then it has two ridges on the sides from which, which are the beginning of a bin-like or basin-like roundish elongated features that are par part of the same thing, and that those uh, side features were probably holding, um, say, uh, food material, for instance, and this central platform-like part was uh, uh, the one on which uh, they were making, doing something with this material. And uh, it was uh, uh, probably one of the central features in that space mm -hmm. at the time um, when it was in use and um, related certainly to the bin area, a storage area that was on the right hand side or towards the north from it. And so the idea is that it, it after all, it was a food stuff that they were preparing on it. Um, There's the sort of hole in the middle of it. Is that an animal burrow or is that, uh, that's yes. not a feature, part of the feature? Probably the, uh, an animal. That okay. is most likely an animal hole, but uh, I'm not entirely no. sure because it has this very vertical and very uh, regular shape. Most uh, animal holes do have that, but this one is very vertical and that's a little uh, surprising. So we will, later when we start removing the feature, we'll see. I expect it to be animal hole, to be honest. Okay. And, and it's also nice to see how that feature was built over the top of, of a little wall that you can see on the floor mm -hmm. level that goes east-west mm -hmm. through the building. So that was some sort of separation yes. between the area on the north, in the north, where uh, th these bins were um, set in, and uh, and most likely that little wall was higher up, so it was like separation of the space and wouldn't allow also the food from the bin area to spill out and come in this uh, without any control in this central area okay. of the space. Okay. And uh, yeah. All right, well then I think we can pass then to the central area that we're standing near. Mm -hmm. And obviously I see a number of things here. Um, buckets. Buckets, <laughs> animal burrows, two large depressions in the floor. And this, then this thing and that are two blocks that we've kept from our east-west control okay. profile. So that's kind of a bulk? For micromorphology, it's a bulk, yeah. Okay, good, so we can dispense with those. And that's for the micromorphology sections that she's looked like the ones she's doing there. Yes, you can dispense with it. Okay. So, in terms of the m features that we're seeing in this hmm. um, area, well, especially obviously these two depressions, but anything yeah, else that you, yeah. there also does seem to be some very interesting flooring right. over there. So, well, well uh, it's it's uh, quite obvious that the central area of the house was um, uh, separated from the rest of the house in the sense that it was lower. And on uh, all the sides from it, uh, on the north there was this uh, highest platform, then on the east side there were two platforms, and on the south side there was this uh, step between it and, and the kitchen area. So, and then on the west side we had a screen wall. So mm -hmm. this was a central area, and even though it's the lowest one in the house, you could think that, that the platforms, because they were higher up, they were more important, but however, this area also seems to have a, a large importance. And what we could see in the central area during removing of a uh, number of layers of floors and renovations in the house, we could see that they w were moving these little uh, hearths or fireplaces from one spot to another spot in the cent all in the central place through each uh, floor level had at least one, sometimes two of these uh, hearts. So they could be interpreted as places for warming up food or uh, even places for warming up the floor. If this, for instance, was the area where they slept, right. or majority of them slept during the night. And the importance of this area also could be seen uh, in that, that the infill of this house that consisting of, uh, 
of the roof and the midden was meeting right in the middle of the central area mm -hmm. of the house. So the roof that was uh, from, the, from the center of the house towards the north and the midden from the center towards the south, they had a meeting point right there mm -hmm. in the middle. And, and then um, we had a number of interesting, interesting and very symbolic features that we, f we found in the uh, remains of the roof and the midden. And these are, we already mentioned, those two skulls that were mm -hmm. obviously placed there on purpose. It wasn't a burial, it was, uh, but it, they were delibera deliberately put there. And we can see because they were very articulated and when they had their uh, foreheads touching mm -hmm. and so forth. And then we had the, the big Bukranian that probably had a plaster and painted plaster on the surface, which was not preserved very well once we removed it. So. Uh, but we could, uh, could see elements of that. Um, and also one big bench-like feature that, that was going from the east wall of the house mm -hmm. towards the center was um, in, in a way connected to, these, to the skulls and to the Bukranian. This is something that we have removed. That pillar, we don't know what it represents, whether it's the edge of the roof or whether it was a clay, a large clay pillar that was holding the Bukranian that was on the, in the east part of the house. But it was deliberately, it seems deliberately mm, broken down and, and pushed and it, it didn't collapse by itself because it was in a perfectly nice position and well preserved. So this, the, all these linking of these elements tell, tell us that, that the central house had some centrality, had some central mm -hmm. importance and the fact that the midden and the roof were meeting right there. And this was all happening in front of the screen wall, which also was nicely plastered and had a sculpture, right. uh, a, a round, big uh, sculpture on it, attached to it, that we found uh, collapsed. It, was, it, was n it didn't really collapse in the, in the real sense of it. It was uh, brought down, it was put down towards the central part of the house. It, it was lying right somewhere here in the center and close to these other features. And what sort of sculpture was it? Uh, we couldn't see, it probably relief. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we... Like a wall relief. Uh, like a wall relief, right. but we, we cannot mm -hmm. say what was on it because it was not preserved. Well, by the time we excavated it, it we had just the fragments of it. We could not put them back together. Uh, because of the mm, plaster being so soft and, right. and falling apart very uh, easily. So, uh, yeah, so we can say that the central part of the house was really um, of great importance as well. Okay. Um, if I um, asked you to guess how many people were living in this house at any given time, what kind of figure would you imagine? Four to twenty. Four to twenty. <laughs> yes, that's Gives right. us a range, anyway. Mm -hmm. And second question. Mira um, might have a different one. What do you think, Mira? Um, it's a well, guess. Well, I, I yeah, said. it's a guess. But uh, we uh, we had a number of local women who live in a similar type of houses still today. That would mm -hmm. be our ethnographic parallel. We had them here. We brought them here and asked them what they thought about the house and what mm. they thought, how many people lived in it, and and how they lived and how they used the space. And so their first reaction to when they saw the house, they said, oh, it's a very big house. And then we said, oh, really? They said, yeah, this must be a rich family that lived in this house. And, and so the, their idea was that at least 15 people lived in here. Hmm. And, and they we were get very 15 people working in yeah. here comfortably. Mm. Without a problem. Yeah. 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 Another question. I, I just wanted to say yes, something please. about these central right. things um, that I'm not sure if M Mira mentioned, but as well as heating these little half things would mm -hmm. provide or could provide lighting okay. of yeah. a very specific kind which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. you've got to sort of think about the placing of that yes. in relation to to yeah. the wall There's and everything. Do I see <coughs> sort of ashy material on the bottom of yeah, those? Yeah all of them had some kind of ashy material yeah. in them. But that's okay. been cleaned out mostly. Right. Right? Here's okay. one, this is one, here's another one, okay. possibly another one under there. Oh, I see that are filled, so there's still fill in here. Yeah, yes, we, we see the bottom of another one and over okay. here. One, we had them all over the place. One over here. So um, what we've been able to do to a certain extent is link them with at least groups of floors and, yeah. and see where, um, how they moved in position, uh, which ones yeah. were Contemporary, and then of course you had the big oven up there providing light as well. Mm. And I don't know if that circle in there is that maybe a post hole coming up. 
You mean that this circular one? one? Yeah. No, the big, this one? the big round one. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that goes all the way. Yeah, it's a cut, but it's a large cut. Yeah, there is something circular in there. But because if this isn't the original wall, then it might be the central. Could be a central post. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. And the other speculative question, I can't remember if it was Mellart, Ian, you folks, who, but I seem to remember reading or hearing something about the, the suggestion that people slept on the platforms in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is your guess about where people were sleeping? M Mira already thought, told you she thought they slept on them. <laughs> okay. I mean, Did you say well, that? Well, the I missed that. <laughs> Well, I, I suggested one, one place. I think that m most of the platforms and the floor were used for sleeping in the winter time. I think they s slept in the summertime on, on the, the roof. roof. Yeah, I think that too. And they yeah. lived uh, on the okay. roof uh, most of the time, but in the winter when they had to sleep inside, they slept, many people slept, and some on the platforms and some maybe in the center of the house. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that they slept in the kitchen area because this was, would uh, not be a good place for it, but right. the, the platform on the east, along the east wall and uh, northeast, uh, and possibly the this central white platform uh, in the north. Uh, okay. the I think that there was sleeping. platforms, uh, not everybody could sleep on it or sit or sleep on each platform that there were special places for different people, different mm -hmm. sets of people, so that each person knew where they were right. in, the, in the space. And would it be a stretch to think that sleeping on the platform has a special significance since the ancestors and, and, even, and the children as well? well Family it, members were buried it underneath It would them? be a stretch, but that's what we're stretching, aren't we? Okay. I mean, the whole, what we've just said in the last five minutes is yes. pure imagination. Okay. Hasn't it? Sure. Would with you agree with some as a science it. writer? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I> uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, let him answer. I want I to hear agree, what he says. I would agree, but if we if we just stick to the facts, then it could life could get pretty boring, could <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yes. Just yes. Yes. Even at science, we don't just stick to the facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. So we'll see about that. <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, why don't we pass, because I know time is limited. Why don't we pass to these three, okay. just briefly at any rate, to these three buildings, um, the three smaller buildings next. And obviously, as I said, one of the things that really intrigues me is that there's, I understand that you think that there might be sort of a passageway between the one in this northeast corner and the main part of the house. Um, no, no, that, that no, not that. It. Oh, no, I thought, I thought you were talking about that. Passageway. This is a grave. Okay, this is a, gra a oh, Roman this grave. Is a later grave. Yeah, okay. this is a Roman grave. Oh, this broken and, grave. And, okay. and was actually dug into the wall of, into the south wall of this building three. Okay. So actually, there's really a thick wall here that Two is walls. not reached. Two It's a double yeah. wall. Yeah. Okay. One wall is like this from here to there. Okay. One wall's like that. So the passageway that we're, you're referring to is the one between these yes. two buildings over here. Yes. Let's go around. Let's okay. go around here. I'll come over there with Mira. I'll come to your okay. side. No, <laughs> this is a bad spot to stand in. Sorry. Where do you want me? Just there. there. Okay. All right, we've got a lot going on here. Well, you want to talk generally about the buildings? Uh, the, three, the three little buildings we see here are most likely later, mm -hmm. quite a bit later okay. than the building down there. Uh, but this is just a guess. It's mostly a guess based on the fact that their floors are higher. Right. And um, they also do seem to have a, a quite separate history. And in this building, um, during 1997, um, this was filled with, at least at its top layers, with burned material. And a Bukranian, big Bukranian, was sitting mm -hmm. on the surface for a number of years and had been noted by the people doing the surface scrape. And, okay. and um, so this is the one where, when we were, we cleaned the Bukranian, and then this is the one I told you about with the little bit of things scratching Mira's wrist and she wanted to clean it, and right. it turned out to be that fantastic dagger, so <laughs> most opportunely found on press day in 1997. <laughs> yes. So everybody is expecting something dagger, tomorrow. <laughs> a dagger <laughs> with a boar's, with a boar's <laughs> bo bone boar's head. Anyway, so and as we came down in this um, in this little space, we found it was filled mostly with kind of modeling clay uh, debris from sculptures, possibly, mm -hmm. or from moldings of, of various kinds. Probably not that didn't originate in this in this space, but 
was thrown in it. And there's a similar yeah. place down in the south, a similar little cell where they, mm -hmm. where they dumped uh, modeling sculptural clay. So in this space, there does seem to be some possible pathway between okay, yes. the two spaces here. So they may be linked, but we're not certain. And then we've got space 88 here. Can you say something about that? Um, yeah, OK. Uh, this is this uh, had a completely different character, this space. And we have talked about it last year, I think. We did talk about and it, yes. Uh, but I didn't have the tape recorded. Yeah, uh, you did not. <laughs> yeah, OK. And it l looks as though uh, the space that Ruth has just described to, uh, to the east uh, looked more like a place that had uh, this uh, symbolic and uh, ritual significance mm -hmm. by, by the finds in it. Uh, this central space that we're looking at now look, looks more like a, a, a high activity area, a place where they were doing things, preparing things, uh, maybe grinding things. We have a, a nice uh, uh, ground stone uh, set up in the floor around cir circular cut and in which we found a ground stone and then we found also uh, the hand pieces for grinding and we found uh, some ochre uh, fragments as well as a small wooden highly polished tools that could have been used like little spatulas if they mm -hmm. had to, um, you know, somehow measure or, or um, spoon out this substance that were, they were grinding. And we also have a little niche in the wall of this room in which uh, they have stored materials, but we have not um, we don't know yet what exactly what was the storage used for. And we also had in it um, a bin-like area here towards the south. Okay. And there was a big platform on top that we had to cut through, and the central part is just the one remain of it. And this uh, platform was uh, very worn uh, from a lot of use, and many times uh, replastered and so forth. We could see that this was a working platform, not a, a place for sleep or okay. sitting. Like, or our, like our platform down there. Not like the our south, platforms like in the main in the house. Okay. So, the so main it house. seems that these smaller rooms c were quite uh, highly specialized in, in different activities. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one is actually bigger than the that too that we have described, but right. it goes uh, towards the west, but we cannot excavate it because of the tent right. being on top of it. This room also seems to have more um, ritual or symbolic uh, activities um, in it than uh, a working uh, place. However, the there was ritual attached to working. Yeah, I would like to add. Yeah, but uh, that's obvious because you have two ritual rooms uh, around surrounding no, the it's working. Not obvious. It's <laughs> the actual activity of grinding has a lot of ritual attached to it, in my imagination. Right. Okay. You want to elaborate on that no. just a little bit? No, okay. no, we don't have time. Okay. <laughs> right. We'll that would be in my book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quote from it in mine. <laughs> that's right, in your book. <laughs> Yeah, so this is what that room is. It's, uh, the, the fill was uh, quite clean, except that we had something similar, uh, like in the main house. Mm -hmm. We had uh, uh, fragments of human skull in it, okay. and um, we also had some pigment that we found in it. Otherwise, it was mostly uh, nice plastered the walls mm -hmm. and floors and even remains of the roof were found yeah, in you here. You can see in the profile how clean the fill is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's much, it's yeah. much more, um, it's much cleaner compared to the fill of the mm -hmm. main building. Mm -hmm. But it usually often that indicates that the, the space has been filled in deliberately. Right, I see kind of layers, there's mm -hmm. sort of more right. ashy material right. on various. But but there Quite is also nice layers, yeah. there is also a cut in that yes. that we can see, which means that somewhere that this room was filled up with uh, uh, with different deposits, but at some point in time it had to be cut. They had to cut into these deposits, and they made a cut in order to redeposit remains of an oven from some other place because mm -hmm. this is what we excavated in this corner. So it was very important to dig down. Uh, and put this oven in that mm. place. And that's where we also found the, the remains of human it's skull humans, yeah. okay. uh, related to it. So, you know, there was a great care was put into um, redepositing certain features from the house and human skeletons as well. Um, okay. okay, that's it. So what else? Nothing. Can we say? Okay. Yeah, uh, in terms no. of something. In terms of uh, contemporaneity of all yes. these spaces, 
uh, if we go by the, the walls between them, if we look, uh, we have the double wall between the main house and these three, and then we have the mm -hmm. double wall between these two rooms, but we have a mm. single wall between these two rooms. So we could hypothesize on that basis that maybe these two rooms were more closer to each other in time, or maybe used even at the same mm -hmm. time. This was a grave, and a Roman grave that cut. It, okay. isn't, a, it isn't anything right. else. Okay. Right. And then that was separated uh, because with two walls, either because it was little early or later in time than these, or because it was more its uh, function was more relating to a house going east from mm -hmm. here or going south from here and not uh, related to the house three that we are e excavating now. Okay. However, you know, somebody else can come and say we most of the houses and rooms around here have double walls. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that they are so close to each other and that they are on similar levels may mean that they were all used uh, at the same time. Right. They're all in exactly the same orientation. And at least and the people who lived in, in that house knew about their presence and vice versa oh, and in okay. past. And so they knew how to position their house in relation to these rooms when they uh, were building and rebuilding the house. Certainly, I mean, they had, we, we, we have so many evidences of their strategic uh, working here, building and depositing their rubbish and everything else that we mm -hmm. have to assume that they knew if they didn't use them co at the same time, they knew very well about their presence and function, all, all of these. Okay. Let me just ask you one last really brief question, okay, and then we're done. Um, and that is your basic excavation plan now um, in terms of this season and potential future seasons. Um, what, is, what is sort of the basic thing that you're going to do? Are you, how far further down do you intend to go or want to go? Um, We're at least going to clean to the bottom of this building, three. Okay. And um, after that, we'll probably have to go down again. Okay. You want to, well, and you will. Well, we can't do anything else. Well, we down we're, the only we're sort of restricted by the by tent, the tent yeah. we could make another tent another area but we we can't move this we could go outwards a little in this direction but not far okay well, we could move the tent I mean, we could move the tent maybe it would be a very big yeah i mean if we can move the tent and it's not and it's uh, not uneconomical and everything then we will okay maybe great maybe but maybe not Okay. <laughs> to be, uh, we'll see. Yes, so we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Listen, thank you both very much for taking out so much time. I really appreciate it. Okay, in the um, northwest corner of Space 86, Laurie has been taking off the floor number one down to what we hope is floor number two. Um, oh, rather, well, uh, taking floor number two off down to floor number three. Um, all over this platform 162 and Anne-Marie has meanwhile been taking micromorphology samples in the north, uh, the western part of this. We can see her little, her little nibbles there. Uh, down here in the northeast corner of platform feature 173 um, we've been taking down that great big blob of whatever it is that's going under the eastern wall, feature 633, and at the same time taking down um, floor 4 underneath it. Um, today we also cleaned the, for finally, the northern, especially the northeastern corner of feature 602 to reveal that other side of the plaster there and this huge animal hole, which is giving us a little inkling into what's going on uh, with feature 633 on the left there. Uh, let's see if I can get inside. Um, we can see that um, it is some kind of a feature that's been dug into the wall, or something is happening. It certainly does go into the eastern wall in this area. Nothing at the centre. 
In the center, they finished drawing. They finished think. drawing. Yeah. Just removing the layers of the floor. And we give feature number to this floor area. And I don't know what number. Up there. Is. This is feature 613. Up there we'll, to its south will be another feature, yeah. It is already. It is a feature. We Sorry, it is. Yeah. Tell you tomorrow, dear diary. <laughs> So this was interesting over here in platform 169 appears to have an earlier edge, right? Yeah, and um, we are removing D floors, floors from D phase, arriving on the nice white C floors. Right, and is it C that's, that's this different configuration of feature 169 here? What do you mean by different? Didn't you say like it's, this is now, oh, right. it's some um, new... Um, eastern edge. Yeah, it probably it was added in, I don't know yet, but in, in the D phase. Right. This edge. Well, especially, yeah, it looks as though that edge yes, is its yes. original C edge mm. over there. It looks, we'll see if it goes. Further, yeah. Because here it's coming out. Is, um, is this a, a fire installation coming up underneath or is it just this is, burned? This is just the, burned the cuts and burn, scorched soil mm. under. And this one is coming out. It's also just the last of the scorched soil. Oh, that's the yeah, feature six three, some two or something like that. And uh, here we um, continued the removal of the east-west bulk into space one five eight. <gasps> How dramatic! <laughs> we can now begin to see the join between the two spaces, mm. so to speak. Yeah. Join because uh, this is much higher. Yeah. And then here you have new situation gone almost completely. Oh right, and this was the pillar. This would be the original. The um, northern pillar of oh, yeah. the, the, the screen wall. Right now I'm on the west, the western side of it. And we had microfauna down mm. here, which we took as a sample and as a block sample. So it was as though it had been mm. placed there or made a little nest. Yeah. And it's possible that this is what we see at the bottom is the original wall, I'm not sure yet. It's not red enough, though. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, speak. So they took the, the, this was the, the and top of the shoring wall down in this area, and they're going to continue doing that all the way down okay. to the south end. And dear diary, Mira and I, Spent an hour and a half, was it today, oh, with, with Michael time. Bolter? Oh, Don't no. let's forget that. In the here, uh, that's uh, right. His uh, first day in the field. Uh, <laughs> not particularly. <laughs> right. Tomorrow morning you can come down and take a close look at some things if you want to. Would you like that? <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah.